let me let me talk about how to do leadership on a positive side of the house, if you will. And, and, and let me just say that from my perspective, I could have that first picture on the screen here, uh, troops. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just say from my perspective, if, if you have 50 points of leadership or 100 points of leadership, there's only one that you really need to remember in order to ensure that you are going to have the best chance of being successful. And that is a simple little rule that leadership is all about people. Leadership is all about people. It is not about technology and it's not about structure and organization and appointment and rank and risk management and process, although those things can contribute or detract to you as a, your ability or work as a leader. But it is about recognizing that you are dealing with people, people who have dreams and aspirations, people who get up in the morning and actually want to succeed. Have you ever met, for example, anybody get up in the morning and said, today I really want to pooch it badly? Uh, you haven't, have you? I mean, people want to succeed, and your job as a leader is to enable them to meet their aspirations and their goals. And you have to remember in those people emotional dreams and fantasies and aspirations and insecurities and abilities and lack of abilities that they are ordinary people who, if you as a leader look after them and enable them and inspire and motivate and sustain and equip them, they can accomplish extraordinary things. It's a pretty incredible thing to be a part of as a leader. If you remember that, it's all about people, you will be successful as a leader or have the best chance of being. And I use this picture right here just to make that point. First of all, I think it's the best picture of a Canadian flag that I've ever seen in my life. I actually love that Canadian flag with that absolutely scarlet maple leaf and, and the bars on the side and the, and the pure white background to it, hanging over the Pacific Ocean in this case. And, but the guy in the picture is a guy named Conrad Cowan, and he brought it home to me all the time about it is all about people as a leader. Conrad is a search and rescue technician, and his job, along with about 150 others across Canada, is to rescue Canadians when they get in uh, difficult circumstances and their life is threatened or they are hurt and their life is threatened. 65% uh, of the time, by the way, Canadians are in those circumstances because they're stupid. That is to say, they go drinking, they drive onto the ice with their pickup truck, like I happened up just north of Toronto a couple years ago. The ice breaks away, helicopter comes in to pick them up, and they throw rocks and ice at the helicopter to drive it away because they don't want to lose their pickup truck through the ice, so they risk their life. These young guys and gals go out and do rescues every day that would make your eyes water. And Conrad and his crew were operating from Comox, British Columbia, and Vancouver Island. They got a call one day uh, in February of last year, late February of last year, climber, a man, had been climbing in the Rocky Mountains in February late afternoon by himself. Pretty stupid thing to do. The only preparation he had really made was that his cell phone batteries were charged. When he was climbing, part of the rock broke away. He slipped and fell down a crevice, was severely injured, was bleeding, losing body fluids. Temperature was uh, just below zero. Night was coming on, and he managed to reach somebody on his cell phone. The call went out, and Conrad and his crew were alerted and launched out of Comox. They were flying in the Cormorant helicopter. That's a our search and rescue helicopter, enormous aircraft about the size of a Greyhound bus with a rotor on top is really what it is. And so they flew in. By now it's dark. It's minus 12. They flew into the Rocky Mountains, found the crevice. 700 meters down uh, was how deep it was. They weren't sure where the guy was. The air crew parked that aircraft about 50 feet off the cliff face in winds that were 20 knots from the side. So you can imagine the skill it took to do that. And Conrad got out on the oist in the darkness, in that minus 12 temperature, and went down more than 300 feet. The oist, like he's on right here. Down more than 300 feet so far that the crew and the helicopter lost sight of him, and the communications on their walkie-talkies were intermittent. The commander was just about to abort the mission. After all, no sense in getting six people killed to not save one. When Conrad spotted the guy on a ledge, started a swinging motion with the, uh, with the oist, got himself to the ledge, grabbed the guy, snapped him to his harness, and brought him back up to the aircraft, and without question, saved his life. A pretty incredible feat. I had the chance to meet Conrad many times. He had been at uh, Rideau Hall and decorated by Her Excellency, the Governor, of General, uh, the Governor General of Canada for Courage, several times already for missions. So when I met him, I was talking to him about this mission. I said, Conrad, when you were down there 300 feet below the aircraft, it's minus 12, it's absolutely dark, very difficult to talk to the people in the aircraft. They can't see you. This is high-risk, dangerous business. He said, what were you thinking about? You know what he said? He said, sir, all I could think about was, when my wife hears about this, she's going to kill me. And, 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 you know, I thought to myself, what a perfect, what a perfect answer. Uh, this was a man who was no superhero. He was an ordinary Canadian. 
because of the leadership he had, the support he had, the preparation he had, because of his dedication and commitment to a mission, he was going to be successful and accomplish extraordinary things. Leadership is all about people. You know, I think one of the great tools of a leader is perpetual optimism. Uh, perpetual optimism, as we would call it in the military, is a force multiplier. It's a combat multiplier. And I would say to you as a leader, if you're going around feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, presenting that image to the people that you lead or work with, that your lip is dragging the ground, your shoulders are bent, you're close to breaking, you've lost faith in your job, your mission, or lost confidence in what you are doing, within 24 hours, the people that you lead will look exactly the same way, and you will be on the road to failure. And I say that because at times here in Canada, we have a tendency to find the most pessimistic view of life when we should be able to find the exact opposite. And just stop for a second and think about the great country in which we live, right? We live in a country where you don't have to worry about things like this. Anybody recognize those plants? Occasionally somebody will, and then they'll refuse to put their hand up because it'll, they're afraid of what it'll say about them. Those are marijuana plants, a marijuana forest in southern Afghanistan. And because of the chaos in that country, these things flourish. They contaminate everything they touch, whether it's corruption of police, government officials, feed money to the terrorist groups, contaminate the pipelines through which they're exported, etc. But they also had two characteristics which affected what we did dramatically. Number one was the plant retains energy. That means it stays very warm. Number two, the plant retains water until you harvest it, until you cut it off, and that means it's difficult to burn. So we tried, for example, if a Taliban fighter popped out of a vineyard and tried to shoot at us, we could track that individual even though he went back through the plants. We could track him because his body is warmer than the plants and our thermal sites and our, and our weapon systems could track him. Not so in a marijuana force. They could pop out of that, take a shot at us, pop back in, and because the plant is so warm, we could not track that individual. Secondly, we tried to burn the plants because we wanted to clear them, wanted to clear fields of observation or fields of fire when we established ourselves in new locations, and we had great difficulty because the plant retains water. So we tried it with white phosphorus artillery shells, did not work, and we tried it with diesel fuel, and all we did was catch some of the plants right on the front edge of this forest on fire because they were broken and already started to dry out. We forgot. We had a section of 10 soldiers that was downwind. And it took us the next three weeks to catch up with the orders for munchies from these guys when they came back into uh, when they came back to the outpost. And we now have 10 soldiers who will never pass another drug test in the Canadian forces in their entire life. We don't have to put up with that kind of chaos in our great country because we live in Canada, best country in the world.